Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the January 26, 2021 episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. She's Kim. He's Chris. And we have lots to share with you today. The first thing that we're going to do is talk about and remind you of our Evo E10 Daisy media player class that we will be holding on the 28th with our colleague Barry Scheuer from Guide Lights and Gadgets. So you'll get to hear the three of us talk about this player. And you know what, Kim, you can tell the world. You have one now. I do. Yay. I have one now. It's so exciting. I finally have one. I got it on Wednesday. I had to think about it. (laughs) It uh, So I've had it for less than a week when you guys hear this. But it's given me time to kind of play with it a bit and learn more about it, which is great. And I actually do like it much more than I initially thought I might, which is also great. I was like, well, it's a player, you know, hmm, I don't know. It's it's another Daisy player, but it really is cool, y'all. And we're excited to share. If Chris and I talking about something isn't bad enough, adding Barry to the mix, we are going to be having lots of fun on Thursday night. So we definitely hope he'll join us and find out more about, okay, well, is it just another Daisy player? Is it something I care about? What makes it different? What are its advantages? What are its drawbacks? Why do I care? (laughs) We're going to talk to you about all that stuff. And we have a surprise. We do. One lucky participant will walk away with a free Evo E10. Barry from Guide Lights and Gadgets is sponsoring this. He will be giving away randomly one player to one lucky participant. You have and to be there live to win. You, and have you can't to be there. have an Evo. <laughs> right. Those are the stipulations. <laughs> Those are the so. stipulations. You can't already have an Evo. So if you've ordered from us or from Barry, we'll know by our records as to whether or not you have one. Otherwise, we encourage you to just be honest with us about it. If you don't have one and you participate live and show up then you're eligible and if you don't want it for whatever reason you can just tell us pass and we'll pick somebody else yes we want to give it to somebody who wants it and and sometimes use it that's kind of how that's going to work it's going to be a lot of fun so of course when you show up for class and have the ability to win this player that's great because it's something free that you can get but while we can't offer you necessarily lots of free products on the mystic access website we don't suddenly say, hey, this product is free, we do offer you a few ways to save money on many of our items. And one of those over the last, what, year or so, has been the ability, yeah, yeah, year and a half-ish, has been the ability to use reward points. And Chris has a little announcement about reward points as of this recording. I do. We found out that the current add-on that we were using was playing havoc on our back end. Uh, Things just weren't working right. So we had placed the points system into a hiatus. However, never fear, we are bringing it back. And I think we're bringing it back and it's going to be a little easier for everybody else involved. We found a new module that is going to work. When that comes back, you're going to notice that they're not called points anymore. We decided to call them beans, magic beans, because think of something like Jack and the Beanstalk, where he has his magic beans and things just grow. So they multiply. (laughs) They multiply, or, you know, every time you purchase something, you get magic beans. And they're almost ready, although I want to make 100% sure that the site's not handing out more beans than we want it to hand out, of course. But it's a little bit easier, because when you want to apply your beans... It'll show you how many beans you can apply during checkout, and you can just add those beans to the order for the discount. And if you don't want to add at the time, you can just continue and move on. So if you want to save your beans, you can save your beans. Now, the problem with beans are they're a living thing, and (laughs) all living things have an expiration date. (laughs) So our beans are going to expire. You have a year to use your beans so if you don't use your beans they will evaporate into the into the netherworld they'll become compost right where all the magic beans decide to go so we just wanted to bring that to your attention and no we won't be offering any golden harps 
for beans. Sorry, wish we could. But we have lots of other cool stuff that you can buy. Next thing I want to bring to everyone's attention is a reminder about the newsletter. Oftentimes we will receive bounce notifications for those of you who perhaps entered email address incorrectly or for those of you who changed email addresses and forgot to change it in the newsletter, something like that. Or maybe something's happened and for whatever reason your newsletter just isn't reaching you for some reason. So here are a few tips to remind you. If you haven't gotten a newsletter lately and we've sent as of this recording in the last four days to both our events list and our main news list. In fact, if you are on our main news list, you got two newsletters from us on Friday because I made a mistake and I had to send a second one. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that doesn't happen very often, but it did happen then. Here's the deal. If you haven't gotten the newsletter from us lately, number one, check your junk or spam folder. Make sure we're not going in there and add us to your safe senders list or your not junk list. Or the other thing you can do is make sure you haven't changed email addresses lately. Did you subscribe with a different email address? You may want to check there. See if there's something in there and you're missing us and maybe you need to change your email address. So you can unsubscribe with the one you don't want and change to the one you do want. The other thing you can do is contact us and say, hey, I know I'm subscribed with an old address. I can't figure out how to change it. Can you change it for me? And we can definitely do that for you. We can update you in our records. Make sure you're subscribed with the address you need to be subscribed with. So if you aren't getting newsletters, check those things. If you know for a fact you are subscribed with the correct email address and you still aren't getting newsletters, you want to contact your ISP, Comcast, Verizon, whatever that is. The email that you're getting is being delivered by Amazon servers. So it's not like we're delivering from a non-known company. <laughs> so you really should be getting through to us. So most likely before you try contacting your ISP, Check your spam or your junk, just in case we're going in there, whichever applies to your email account. And if you can't find us there, then maybe you contact them, see what's going on. Check with us, make sure you're still subscribed, make sure something hasn't happened, you haven't bounced off, because you actually get three chances before your email address bounces off completely. So we've had several of you lately who have been bouncing, and occasionally I'll get an email from somebody saying, I haven't gotten the newsletter from y'all in like three months or six months or whatever. If you want to subscribe, you're always welcome to come to the website and subscribe to one or both of our lists. We have a primary news list and then we have an events list where we give event information for all of the upcoming events. Now, the one we're having on Thursday night is a public event. Anybody can come. The information is out there publicly right now on our news page. So you can get it. And I'll even put it in the show notes for this podcast. So you can come join us. But generally speaking, if you're on the events list, that's where you get the joining info for the class for our upcoming events. Check there if you want to be subscribed to get class information or check the checkbox for news if you want to be on our general news list. We'll announce events. We won't necessarily give joining info for them, but we will announce them if they're public. We'll certainly give joining info for them, but that's more of a generalized news list. You'll find out about upcoming products. You'll find out about discounts, sales, stuff like that. All that goes to the general news list. So that's how the news lists work. So if you're having trouble, if you think, I used to be subscribed, but I haven't gotten a newsletter in a long time, visit the site or get in touch with us and tell us you want us to subscribe you, and we will make sure that you are on the list. So just some notes for those of you who are bouncing off the list. Just make sure that you maintain your list so that you get the information from us that you want. So some people like reading their emails in Braille from their mailing lists. Am I correct in that assumption? Sure. Sure. I would Good. think so. All right. So a couple few podcasts ago, we had that super secret project and that super secret project is now public. We now have up on our free downloads page, audio documentation for the Brilliant BI 20X and 40X products. So there's four files that you can download, two are DAISY, two are MP3. There's two for each product. So DAISY and MP3 for the 20 and DAISY and MP3 for the 40. So this has been a fun collaborative project with Humanware, as well as some of you know that we've done tutorials for Humanware in the past, Braille Note Touch, which is probably the most popular one, and the Brilliant BI-14. Well, those are also in the Humanware category. 
Absolutely. You can go to our free downloads page. You can look at the humanware category and all our humanware downloads are there. Now, just to clarify something that Chris said, the DAISY and the MP3 files are the same content. You just pick which one you want. If you want to put it in your stream or use FS Reader or Voice Dream Reader or Dolphin Easy Reader or something like that, you can get the DAISY and you can have all that navigation. MP3, you're just not going to have as much navigation. You can put it wherever you want. If you have an Evo player, you can put it in there. Or you could use the DAISY content instead. You can use the DAISY content in the Evo, in the stream, in the book port, in whatever DAISY product you have. You could even do it if you have a cartridge or a thumb drive. You can use it with the NLS players as well. Yep. We always make MP3 an option for y'all. It used to be that MP3 was always more popular than Daisy on our sites. And with this one, that appears to have flip-flopped. So it's kind of funny looking at the download numbers. I was just looking before the podcast. <laughs> and now more people seem to be downloading Daisy. So that's kind of an interesting little thing. But it is available. It's three hours of content per product. Whether you get the MP3 or the Daisy, you can learn about these great new Braille displays. And they're really so much more than Braille displays from humanware and as always it was a lot of fun collaborating on this product chris was the guy who once skeptically said you can't do a tutorial on a braille display that doesn't have any speech built in well we've kind of made an art form of it now so (laughs) yes you can and the nice thing is somebody like humanware even understands the value of that audio content even though again it is a braille display it's three hours of listening to me talk sorry (laughs) <laughs> but hopefully it's very valuable. So that's available. And of course, I will link to probably just the humanware downloads category on the site. And then you can check out whatever product you want. These are very affordable displays in terms of cost. And they just have a lot of features. I think y'all will be very impressed with what they offer. So very pleased to be sharing this documentation with you. You know, Kim, you just said that the Braille displays were relatively inexpensive and that is true however yep. they are still expensive little devices sure they are i they mean are. you're looking at 1800 plus for either one of them <laughs> right so what if you had a way to lock up your braille display or lock up other things of value so what like put them in a lock box under the bed fireproof lock box something like that <laughs> exactly yes or you put them in some kind of safe or something that You know, you don't want somebody to come in and walk off with your Braille display. We had this discussion earlier about blindness technology on the black market. I don't know how much people (laughs) would really get. So Yeah, there's that. But there are other things you might want to put in a (laughs) lockbox. Yes, there are. That people would know how much value is in them. (laughs) One thing that I was looking for was a way to lock up a box that sits outside that you can put packages in or have a mail person put packages in and the one that i found i haven't had it put together yet so i don't know how this is going to actually work but the <laughs> yeah, concept we'll update you on this part <laughs> right the concept is kind of cool because the mail person comes you don't need a key they take the package they put the package in the top of the box and then there's like a trap door where the package drops through into a lower portion of the box. At least this is what I understand. And you, as the owner of the packages in the box, would have a lock that you would lock up your packages so nobody can come take them. I have this lock. It's by EG Touch, and it's E-G-E-E, but the screen reader pronounces it EG Touch. It looks like a really, really hefty lock. There's no keys. It's completely keyless. You charge it via USB, and it's supposed to run, I thought it said three years or something, but that, doesn't, that seems too long. Yeah, but it's is not, it micro-USB it, or USB-C or what? I can't remember. I thought it was USB-C, but I tried to put a USB-C cable in it, and it didn't want to seem to fit. (laughs) We can update you on the next podcast, because I don't have a cable in front of me. On the front face, you're going to find a circle, and it says touch here. And to me, it looks like a, a volume knob or something, but it's not. It's the NFC. It's where if you want to unlock your lock with NFC, you can. If you want to unlock it, With Bluetooth, you can do that as well. When I tried to unlock it using NFC, it brought up Apple Pay. So it was trying to pay my lock to do something. I don't quite know. (laughs) 
but uh, I couldn't get it to work under iOS. I have not tried it under Android, so maybe they don't have access to the NFC chip on on uh, iOS, but it definitely is NFC because it um, one fifty two p.m. put the, the phone near it. It wants to buy stuff. <laughs> is that what it was doing just now? Yes, because I put the phone near it. So is it metal? Is it stainless? I mean, what's yes. it like? Yes, it's weatherproof. It is totally metal. It looks like a really, really hefty padlock. You could use it for, you know, your bikes and or stuff like that. If you had a tandem or whatever, you could use it for your bike or you lock it up. Anything that you would put a padlock through, you could use this. They have other like locks. Could you work locker or something like that? But yeah, it depends on how big the shackle the is. Sh- yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm using fancy terms that I just learned Ooh, a couple of days ago. Exactly. <laughs> if the shackle can fit through the holes on the lock, maybe a school locker or something. Yeah, I was thinking about school or work, you know. You got lockers. I remember when I was in school, eons ago, <laughs> they had to disable the combination lock. And we had to go through all kinds of stuff <laughs> to get that to work because I was the only one in the school that had my own keyed padlock. And That's what uh, I had, too, was a keyed yeah. padlock. They let me use a key. Was your locker the same way where you had a combination lock and they had to disable it? Well, they didn't disable it. They just took it off. Oh, that must have been what my, they did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was able to put my lock on. I wish I still had it. It was a cool little lock, but God knows where that went. Years ago. I probably still have the key to mine, but I'm sure I don't have the lock anymore. I don't know where the lock is. The cool thing about this lock is that you can unlock it using Bluetooth. And unfortunately, you won't be able to hear it unlock because it makes a click and I can lift up the shackle and stuff like that. But let's take a look at the app really quickly. Go to app, app switcher. switcher. EG Touch. Active. Swipe up with three there fingers to close the app. After EG 10 touch, years button. of knowing Chris, I'm finally teaching him to use the app switcher. It's so nice. Button. Dashboard. Heading. Button. So here's what we have. We have a button. So there's an unlabeled button. Then we have a dashboard. Dashboard. Heading. More info. Button. Direct touch area. Use the rotor to you enable don't... direct Ooh. touch for this app. Yeah, you I have don't an really... app like that. I hate it. <laughs> you don't really have to use it. You can oh, watch this. Nice. <laughs> button. Lock by the pool. So. Okay, I don't says, understand what you just did. I just swiped past that. Okay. And there is a lock that I called lock by the pool okay. although it's not going to be a lock by the pool but it was better than my lock one and then you'll have the serial number which will be censored out so just to let you guys know that you will hear censored beeps because you actually get to see the serial number so i'm going to flick to the right again access logs button you can access logs which is cool share lock access button i can share the lock access let's say that i wanted to give kim access to unlock this lock like any smart device i can send her an invitation to be a part of this lock so that she could unlock the lock if i had access how would i unlock the lock i just take my uh, phone yep turn i'll show you in on. a minute this okay. is what it, this is what it would be like all right so we're going to flick to the right. Add lock button. I can add a lock. And it was like the most simplest process ever to add the lock. So this is if you have a second one. Yes. You can have mm-hmm. multiple locks. So you can add a lock. And it took me literally less time than it is for me to explain that I'm adding a lock. It was like, hit the power button. Okay, hit the power button. Done. Let's go back to. Share lock access button. Access logs button. Lock by the pool. This lock by the pool. Now I'm going to double tap this. Serial number. So now we're on the page for this specific lock. So again, if you had multiple locks, they would show up on that first page or the dashboard. And so if you want to edit your lock, you can do it from here. Yes, you can. So we're going to flick to the right. Lock by the pool. Lock red. Dimmed. Button. A white background with gray text. Lock. The lock is red. It means that the lock is actually locked. Okay. And it's dimmed because it's not connected. It's not powered on yet. So if I hit the right arrow. In progress. Or skip to the right. Press power on button on EG Touch to begin. So it says press power button on EG Touch to begin. So I'm going to grab the lock and I'm going to press the power button, which is on the lower right bottom of the lock. On the bottom of the lock, you have a rubber gasket that goes over the USB port. To the right of that, you have the power button. You press that power button. It beeps. Now, if I go to in progress. the lock red button, a white surface with black text, Loke, a white surface See, with black now... text and a green logo, Loke. Yeah, it a white is text now... and a green logo, so it's not right. dimmed out anymore. It's not. 
So I hit that. Lock red. A white surface. It's with black now text unlocked. And, logo. Lock, unlock and I green, pull the shackle. A white surface with black. Shackle open. And it even tells you the shackle's open. So now if I flick to the right. Please close shackle to lock. So please close shackle to lock. So if I spin the shackle back, lock it. It's now locked. Shackle open. Shackle open. Please close shackle to lock. Tap here if shackle is closed. Button. It is. Thank you. Shut down. Now, Button. I can shut the lock down. So I can't unlock it anymore if I want to. But let's say that I made a mistake and I forgot my gym clothes or whatever. Lock access. In the locker. Heading. Serial number. Lock by the pool. Unlock green button. A white background with black text and a logo. Lock. A white it's actually green. Text Why is it green, green now? Lock. Because it thinks it's... Because it's actually unlocked. Okay. I'm an idiot because I didn't push the shackle all the way down. Let's try that again. <laughs> there. Now it's locked. Did you hear those two beeps? Yes. It's now locked. So, so if you flick and out, it should say red. Lock red button. Yep. If I double tap this button here. Lock red. A white surface it's with now, black text and a green logo. Lock, it's now unlock unlocked green, again. Button, a white surface and with it's black actually, text okay, and a green Okay, but when you hit lock red that time, it wasn't dimmed out. I'm still communicating with the, the lock. So the lock's oh, not shut that's off That's what yet. that shut down thing yes, is. Yes, exactly. Got you. So I can actually go ahead and kill it. If uh, I know I'm done with the lock, I can go ahead and shut it down. But if I'm not, I'm going to just close the shackle here. Uh -huh. uh, you got to open it, shackle and then open. you got to close it. Shut okay, down. Now it, it's now there's where the shutdown button is. It right. focuses the shutdown button. But if I go here. Lock access. Heading. Serial number. Lock by the pool. Lock red button. A white background with so black text. Still auto locked. shutdown in. So auto shutdown in. 3.1 button. I've got three and a half, three minutes roughly that I can continue to work with this lock. Button. Before yeah, I. Yep. Touch to use NFC button. So there's touch to use NFC. I never got that to work. Min. Lock, unlock, invert button. I'm not sure what that means. Apple Watch invert. button. Did that say invert? Yeah. Audit trail menu. Apple Watch button. I can unlock it with my Apple Watch, which is kind of slick, too. Audit trail menu button. There's the audit trail. You can actually see who's locked and unlocked your lock, and you can also see where they unlocked it from, which is kind of cool. So if I go in here, it would show my email address, the date and time that the lock was unlocked and or locked, and then it would show the current location from GPS. So I can go to the right. Settings button. Settings. Here's settings. Let's take a peek at settings. Setting. Change lock's name. So I can change my lock's name. Change your smart lock's name to your preferred name. Lock by the pool. Text field. Double tap to so edit. So right there, I could change it. Submit button. I could submit that change if I changed it. Change primary password. There's your primary password. So when you set up the lock, it's going to prompt you for a numeric password that you put in so that it can unlock and lock your lock for you it's probably something like zero 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 or something like that obviously you don't want to leave that alone you'd want to put some digits in there and change the password change your smart locks primary password to your preferred password new primary password text field double tap confirm new primary password text field double tap to edit swiping through submit button there's a submit lock button. settings Here's lock settings. Auto unlock. I can have it auto unlock. Switch button off. Double For tap some to reason, setting. I don't know if it's iOS or if it's this app. I can't toggle this. So I'm not sure why that's not allowing me to auto unlock it. You may not want to auto unlock your lock anyway, depending on what it is. Power saving mode. So here's power saving Unpronounceable. mode. Unpronounceable. Combining and close. Switch button off. Double tap to toggle setting. Lock broadcasting period. 10 seconds. Button. So when you turn it on, it broadcasts repairing mode for 10 seconds when you're adding a new lock. Lock auto shutdown time. And here's your auto shutdown time. Five minutes button. You can change that to something lower than five minutes if you wanted to as well. Notifications. You can turn on notifications. Unlocking. So you know when somebody's unlocked your lock. Switch button on. Double tap device information. And here's all the device information, the firmware, the serial number, and stuff like that. So I still want to know. If you gave me access to the lock, how would I unlock it? Because you didn't open Bluetooth or anything to connect to the lock. I assume your phone already is connected. Do I connect first and then go into the app and do just what you did? That's actually a good question that I don't know the answer to. Yeah, I'm not understanding the process. If I share the lock with you in normal situations, you're going to have to have an account with them. Oh, you have an account with them. You didn't mention yes. that part. Okay. Yes. Sorry, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when you download the app, you create an account. I did that like three weeks ago and just received the lock. So I completely forgot about that. You get an account and it must connect that lock to you somehow, whether it's via Bluetooth or not. So you didn't do that? You didn't go into Bluetooth settings and connect the lock? Nope. Okay, I'm even more confused now. <laughs> I don't, no, I, do. I don't really understand how your fancy schmancy lock works. <laughs> it's via Bluetooth. <laughs> but you just said you didn't do Bluetooth. I didn't. I followed the instructions in the app and did what I was told. And it literally just added the lock. It was a matter of 10 seconds. It says, okay, lock added. So if you turned your Bluetooth off right now, your lock would not work, correct? That's if it's a Bluetooth lock. Turn off Bluetooth. Now, of course, he's disconnected everything, but he can tell right. us. Bluetooth powered off. Bluetooth powered off. Please power, on, Please power on Bluetooth phone to continue pairing with EG Touch. So, technically, it is a Bluetooth enabled device. But you don't connect it via your Bluetooth settings. Weird. Right. Weird, weird. Okay. Without you physically being here, there's no way to test this theory and see how this actually does work. No, I'm just wondering how they connected to a Bluetooth device that they didn't know you had. How are they connecting it to you? How's the company connecting it to you if you don't go in and physically connect it via your Bluetooth? They must do it somehow and save it somewhere because when I did it in the app, it just prompted me. I turned the power on to the lock and it says, okay, successful. So it must, wow. have, done, it must have done something. I'm curious now that you mentioned that. Turn on Bluetooth. <laughs> he wants to see if there's a lock in there. See, to me, that freaks me out just a bit because I'm not understanding how they connected that to your device. Open Bluetooth settings. Here's the setting for Bluetooth. It's, it's not, not even, even there. That freaks me out even. a bit. Yeah. It's Bluetooth. Let me but see. But it's not, because it's not showing your devices. I mean, it is, but it's not. I just turned it on. Did you hear that? Dude. No, because my my oh. thing was making sound. Oh, that was your sound. Okay. Let me see. Oh, there it is. It just decided to show up in Bluetooth settings. So it is a Bluetooth device. Yeah, that makes me feel a little better knowing that it should. But it seems very strange that you didn't do it. The app talked to the phone, talked to the talked to the lock, and they were yeah. happily happily together. So yes. Yeah. Wow. So how does someone go about getting this lock? There will be a link in the show notes to our Amazon affiliate link. How Did much I, is it? If I remember right, it was about forty bucks. It really wasn't much for all that it can do. So speaking of inexpensive items that can do quite a lot, I have sitting next to me an inexpensive little computer. And I think the most expensive one's like, what, 160 bucks? Something yes. Something like that. This is the Amazon Fire tablet. And we have the Amazon HD8 Plus. And that's the one that we used to create the Fire tablet tutorial. And we have a little announcement about the Fire tablet tutorial. Don't worry. It's not going away since it just got released. But we do want to share something that recently happened. If you have a newer, this probably only applies to you who have newer Fire tablets. So let's say... I don't know, one of the last few recent versions that you've bought in the last year or two. There has been an update, and it changes your interface. Actually, what it does is it minimizes your interface. It doesn't change anything. It just takes some things away. So I'm going to unlock mine and show you real quick. 2, 10 p.m. So this is not the default voice. This is Russell. The device unlocked. Amazon Insider. Item 1 of 3. And I'm going to go to the Double top of my tap screen. Tap. Home. There we go. Let me go up here into my stat. Trying to get into my status bar. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. For you. For you. Voice I'm search. 2.11 p.m. Email notification. 142 new messages. Watch post notification. Voice view notification. Okay. So I'm in my status bar. And I haven't turned this on in a while, which is why I've got lots of goodies in there for my notifications. But I'm on the status bar. And what's nice about the Fire tablet, for those of you who don't have them, is you can actually swipe across your status bar and learn all the different things you have going on. Settings notification. Send it. App store notification. Voice view notification. Voice watch post notification. Email notification. 1211 p.m. There's your time. Wi Fi signal full. There's my Wi Fi signal. Alexa hands free off. Alexa hands free off. My battery's here somewhere. And of course, I set my A L E X A off. Wi Fi signal full. 211 p.m. Email notification. Watch post notification. Voice view notification. App store notification. Settings notification. Set battery 66%. There we go. I was looking for my battery status. It's over here near the end of the status bar. And now if I flick right, search. We have search. Double tap voice search button. Voice search. For you. For you. Home. Home. Library. And library. Double tap to and activate. And then if I go right from there. Home. New items. 
We have home new items. There used to be nine tabs or nine panes or nine sections at the top of the fire screen. And depending on which of those you double tapped would depend on what your screen looks like underneath those sections. So it was kind of an interesting concept in terms of the interface. Now, however, instead of there being nine, there are only a few. The main ones are home, library, and for you. Home is where we are right now. So if I flick past these sections here. Amazon Insider. Watch. Shop. Self Browser. Row 1. Column 2. Shop Amazon. Row 1. Column 1. We have your apps. Self App Store. Row 1. Column 3. And I won't show you all these. Double obviously. tap to activate. But I'm just kind of showing you what's there. So now, if I go back. Amazon Insider. Item 1 and 3. New Library. To. Home. For you. These tabs are Double along tap the to top. Activate. I can go into for you. for you. And it's going to change my screen. So if I tap kind of near the bottom center of the screen. Recommended for you and Kindle Unlimited. We have recommended for me and Kindle Unlimited. Now, if I don't care. An unfinished story. A novel book walker. Item 1 of 50. About these 50 Double items. Double tap to activate. I can take two fingers. Search. Voice search. Button. For you. Home. Library. Good afternoon. Oops, and I messed up. <laughs> it's three fingers. So what it was doing was reading to me from the top of the screen. Because I took two fingers pulled up toward the top of the screen it began to read to me that's not what i want to do i want to use three fingers library good afternoon location north carolina and i actually am back in my home tab so i need to go Amazon inside back up one of new home for you voice search for you for you for you i'm going to go back down here open house a novel candy sign under a gilded moon a novel joy children an unfinished story a novel big walker recommended for you and kindle unlimited so those are novels in recommended for me in kindle unlimited because i have a kindle unlimited subscription if I take three fingers and pull up toward the top of the screen, Search. you hear that sound? It's moving Double me, tap to activate. scrolling me to a new page. So now I'm touching the screen. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. Voice search button. All hits Amazon's music experts and updated Fridays. Item three of 41. So Mellow 70s gold Amazon's music experts. Item two of 41. Country heat Amazon's music experts and updated top free playlists. These are top free playlists. So now Search. I can scroll again. I can touch the screen. Dan Rather. Story. Thicker than water. Tyler Shelves. Item 3. Freaks. Matthew Darby. When you finish saving the world, Jesse Eisenberg. Audiobooks based on your Amazon purchases. Audiobooks based on my Amazon purchases. So there's all sorts of categories here in the For You tab. You can find out about books. You can find out about music. You can find out about Prime Video. You can find out about a lot of things that Amazon is recommending you. Let's go back to the top of the screen. Westwick the Giraffes. Top. A novel for you. There's for you. Home. So the other option library. is library. Library. So I'm moving to a new version, as it will, or a new pane on the screen. And now, if I touch the screen, sometimes this takes a minute. Apps. Show more button. Bard mobile. Item one of one. Games. Show more button. Magic jigsaw puzzles. Item one of two. MMX hill dash and dash off road racing. Self browser. Show more button. So from here, it's going to show me multiple things in my library so let me show you what this is Kindle. so here's Double Kindle. Show more button. there's show more a splendid ruin a novel item one of 20. memories these and are drift. items a novel item two of 20. that i've purchased birds and blooms tread softly on my dreams an epic birds novel from islands past the liberty trilogy book one birds and blooms item five of 20. october 1st two. tread birds and blooms item three of 20. new so i have a Double new birds and blooms issue tread soft birds and bloom Passage Maker, item 6 of 20, October 1st, 2020. That's a magazine. Spellbreaker, item 7 of 20. So if I want Double to move tap to, act to another activate search. item here, I can move up with three fingers and touch. Show more button. Audible. So this is Audible. Double tap to activate. So here's Audible stuff that I've downloaded. Show more button. January 21st, 2021, item 1 of 21, new. And Double tap this to has to be the New York Times Digest. January 20th, two, January 19th, 2000. And there's lots of them. I'm going to move up again. And viral touch. inaugural moments taking over the internet from ABC News. Two hours ago, item two of 21. Two of 21. So that's viral inaugural moments taking Double over the internet. So these are news stories. I'm going to move up again. A little bite-sized piece of history here. For viral you inaugural enjoy. moments taking over the internet. And it's not letting me move up anymore. I'm going to flick. Chris to is going to edit this out, but I'm going to flick and see. Device dashboard button. That's the flicking sound. Customize library yes. button. It looks like, oh, and I can customize my library there at the bottom. So you can kind of customize what's in it. 21 of 21. But there Highly is... Highly contagious UK COVID-19 variant could be more deadly. From ABC News, 13 hours... 
Oh, that's comforting. There is the last news story at the bottom of my library. So you have various things in your library that you can customize it to show you. Twenty one customize library buttons. Open up real quick. And here are my options. Checkbox checked. There are checkboxes. Apps. Apps. Checkbox checked. So there's apps. Games. Games. Checkbox checked. You can pick what it shows you. Self browser. Checkbox checked. And we missed some of this out of the recording, but it's showing me all these different things. Prime video checkbox checked. Oil. So right now Oil. they're all checked. Checkbox checked. News. News. And news. Checkbox checked. Cancel button. And I can cancel. Recent that's apps. That's what I'm going to do right now. So that's how it works now. It's simplified your interface a little bit. Show I haven't decided button. if I Double love it or hate activate. it. Prime video. So there's Prime video. Show more. The education of little tree. Item one of one. Oh, that's one of the last things I was actually watching. It's showing me things that I have watched in my library. So your library is stuff that you've actually purchased, not recommendations. For that, you want to go to for you. So it's essentially simplified the interface of how the fire works. Now, if you have an older fire, I'm just going to log mine. Device locked. You won't have to worry about this. This is not what yours will look like. So what I'm going to do is leave the documentation as it stands. For all the items in the, I think there were nine tabs along the top, or at least nine options along the top, you can still access them all. You'll just go into their relevant app. So it's just a different way of getting there than what is shown in the documentation. There's no point in changing all the documentation because those are no longer there. It's basically just minimizing your interface is what this has done for those of you with newer Fire tablets. So don't worry about this. The information is the same. And if you go into games or Prime Video or Amazon Shopping or App Store or whatever, you will still be able to see all the same stuff that you see in those tabs that are currently shown in the documentation. So I just wanted to explain if you get it now and you're going, but mine doesn't look like this. <laughs> that's why. And that's how you get around that. So you can still follow me on the little tour. You're just doing it through the apps and not through the no longer existing tabs, if that applies to you. Like you, I don't know if I love it or hate it, but just in, in you talking about it, I think it makes more sense because... I think it does because the, you're essentially, we're seeing twinsies, you know, of a lot of things. Well, you were, but like your Audible thing, if you go down there and configure your library, you can turn off the stuff you don't care about. In the other or older interface, you still had to switch to those things if you were interested in them, or you had to, if you were a flicker versus a direct touch type of person, then you would be going through those nine different tabs, even though you didn't care about some of the stuff. It was still there. you really didn't there. have to. You could have stayed in the home tab and gotten essentially the same experience you're going to get now. Right. But there's just more stuff on the screen that you may have to deal with. Where there's really not anymore. Is... <laughs> right. In the old version I'm talking yeah. about. There's yeah. More stuff on the screen that maybe you don't care about. Like I'm... I would probably go in and shut off games because I can care less about games. For the and, library and it, portion, right. Yes, yeah. The only thing I haven't figured out yet, and I've only been playing with this for less than 24 hours, so I don't know yet. The only thing I don't know yet is, is it going to give me all the book recommendations that I got before? Am I going to be able to see all those same things I was getting before? Am I going to get the same customized experience that I had before? That's yes, what I don't know. It said show more in all of those things. Oh, wait. Yes, I think but that was for the library. Right, I see what you're saying. Okay. If I go into For You and I want to see all kinds of different categories of books, what if it's only showing me one? Well, one way you can fix that is you can go into Kindle and you can see what happens from within there. Or you can go into books from, I was going to say, is there a bookstore? How did I do that in the actual documentation? I don't remember. The, there's books. There was a thing called books. Yeah, but that was a tab, wasn't it? I don't remember. Or did I go into the app store? I don't even remember now. I have to there play was a, with this There was more. a bookstore. There was a Kindle bookstore. From your library. So there's from Dulled. my library. Of memories. Birds and books. Tread softly on my dreams. Most recent book. Don't tread softly on my dreams. An epic novel from Ireland's past. Store. Tab. There it is. Here we go. Double tap They're to down activate. here. There's the store. More. Tab. There's more. Device dashboard. Button. And there's device Double dashboard. Double tap to open device. Not... More. Tab. Store. What you tab. Want. Most recent book. Don't tread softly on my dreams. An epic novel. Library. Tab. And there's the library Double tab. Double tap to activate. So we're in the library tab. It isn't telling us that. Uh, tab selected. Oh, no, we're in the home Double tab. Double tap to activate. So we have these tabs down here toward the bottom of the screen. So if I library. chose to go in Most a recent store, book, don't trade softly on my drink. that would show me all the categories and things like that for books. So what we're basically telling you is, uh, and I'm going to go home, home on my tablet. Row two, column two. 
Double is tap that? To the device locked. I'm just locking my device. You have the same items. You just have different ways of getting to them. So it is less cluttered. It's a less cluttered interface. If I were showing you this right now with the new interface, I'd be showing you the same stuff. It would just be in different places. The layout would be different. So I don't want this to hang you up as to whether or not this documentation is still going to be relevant or assist you if you have a newer Fire tablet. It still will. You'll understand it more when you have the tablet in front of you, have the documentation in front of you, and you can follow me because you'll understand. And in fact, when a large enough update happens so that we can update this thing, you know, even 20 minutes of material, I will add toward the beginning a segment explaining this so that you'll understand, oh, it's all the same stuff. When I just updated my tablet today, and we're recording this two or three days before the podcast goes live, I had the same old interface until I powered it off and turned it back on because we even went and matched build numbers because she was seeing this new interface and I was still seeing this old interface. So when I powered mine off and powered it back on, I got a little dialogue that came up and it said that the interface has changed to this more simpler interface and then i hit got it once i hit got it it was a button the old interface is now gone and it is the newer interface and to our knowledge there's no way to change back once you update <laughs> you've got the new interface now for those of you who have older tablets or anything under 7.0 you don't have to worry about this it's all exactly as it was in the documentation. They haven't changed the thing in like six, seven years. I do audio documentation for it and it changes in two months. But that's how it is. Stuff's a moving target. And we want to make sure that what we're offering you is still valid, is still usable. This is still very valid and usable. And it's the only thing like it on the market. So I'm still very proud of it. Just know that you're going to be doing things just a smidge differently. And that's okay. Speaking of things you might be doing a bit differently, <laughs> earlier in the year, or I guess later last year now, we showed you a website called tvtv.us for TV listings. And I want to quickly show you an iOS app equivalent to that. Now, I haven't checked yet to see if this is on Android. It might be. This is an app called TV Listings Plus. TV Listings Plus, P-L-U-S, three words. And so that's what you'll look for to find this. The developer is Futanta, or Futanta, not exactly sure, but it's P-H-U. T-A-N-T-A, -A, and that's three words as well. So that's how you'll know that you have found the correct app. I'm going to be using my SE2020 for this with the latest iOS 14.3, and I'm going to say, open TV listings. TV listings, button, Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, heading. So we have Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, and the first thing we see on the screen is this unlabeled button. Now, when you install this, it's going to ask you for your five-digit zip code, and it's going to ask you to choose a channel lineup. So either from broadcast, from cable, from something in your local area. And I think that's the only things it asks you. Do you remember it asking you anything else? No, I think that's correct. So you're going to choose that, and then you're going to find a channel listing where you can turn channels off. They're all turned on by default, but you can turn them off. So let's say you're not a sports fan. And there's golf channel in the listing that you pick. And you don't care. You can double tab the off button next to the channel. And it won't show it to you anymore. <laughs> and then you hit apply. And once you hit apply, you're ready to go. It's set your channel listing to that area. But there's so much more to this app. And I want to give you a quick understanding. Now, this isn't perfectly accessible. But I can show you where things live. So, button. button. top left of the screen, we have an unlabeled button. Current selected. Modern style. If I double tap this, we have two different styles to view your channels. We have modern style. Modern style. Selected. Button. Traditional style. Button. And traditional style. I think modern, personally, is much easier to read. But you can try whichever one you prefer. Cancel. Button. I think button. it told you more in modern, especially around the times of the shows, instead of just giving you a calendar. You got the time of the show and you got the name of the show. I, I think you correctly. still got the time and the name in traditional, but it read you like three shows at once. So it was right. a little more confusing than modern style. So you're welcome to try and see what you like better. This is just a quick tour of how this app works. I'm going to move to the right. Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, heading. And it says Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, heading. If I move right again. Button. 
We have another button. And this one is cool. I'm going to double tap it. Button. All current selected. All categories. So we can categorize how we want our listings to be shown. So right now we have all categories. All categories. Default. Button. That's default. Movies. Button. Movies. Sports. Button. Sports. News. Button. News. Family. Button. And family. Cancel. Button. And a cancel, cancel button. button. So right button. now. Move out. Cur current selected. All categories. All categories is my current selected. But I want to go button. back over here to. Cancel. Family. Button. Family. Button. Now it's going to show me channels with family related shows. So I'm going to flick right. Family. Heading. Button. 12 a.m. 12.30 a.m. Now here's your calendar, essentially. So right now it is 2.30 in the afternoon when we're recording this. So let's say I want to know what's coming on at 3. 1.30 p.m. 2 p.m. 2.30 p.m. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. I don't know if this is going to work, by the way. So I double tapped 3 p.m. 056. Tune. The Amazing World of Gunball. The Sock. The Genius. 3 p.m. Runtime. 30 minutes. Up next. 3.30 p.m. The Amazing World of Gunball. Begin in 24 minutes. It works. 3.30 p.m. If you double tap a time that you want to know when something's on. 057. Boom. Sylvester I'm tweeting mysteries. Spaced out. Autumn's leaving. 3 p.m. Runtime. 30 minutes. Up next. 3.30 p.m. Sylvester I'm tweeting mysteries. Begin in 24 minutes. 3.30 p.m. It's Sylvester and Tweety. Mortgage rates fall again. Now, we have an ad here. percent APR. It's kind of in the middle of your listing. For $100,000. Once I move through Terms here. and conditions apply. 113. UNCKD. Pinkalicious and Pederific. Season 1, Episode 54. Amazing Sled Run. Frost Fairy. 3 p.m. Run time. 30 minutes. Up next. 3.30 p.m. Eleanor wonders why. Begin in 24 minutes. 3.30 p.m. So it's telling me. Pinkalicious and Pederific is coming on at 3 p.m. Eleanor wonders why is coming on at 3.30 p.m. But I can double tap this. Selected. Today. Button. Heading. And now I have options I can look at today. Now I'm on PBS Kids, the PBS Kids channel, which a lot of you can access through broadcast media. Um, 113. Heading. And in my case, it's UNC TV 113. Family. Back button. And I just moved to the left. There's a back button that'll take me back to my family. Back button. Family category of channels. Um, 113. Heading. There's my channel call letter and number. Selected. Today. Button. Heading. Today is selected. But. Tomorrow. Button. Monday, January 20th, Tuesday, January, Wednesday, Jan Thursday, Friday, January 29th, button, heading. So I can go all the way through January 29th. So I can see what's coming on any of those days. Now, if I move right from here. 10 a.m., Let's Go Luna, Season 1, Episode 8, Boom and Boomerang, House Music. I can see what's come on earlier today. 10.30 a.m., 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 12 p.m., 12.30, 1 p.m., Arthur, Sense, 1, 2, Let's say. 30 p.m., Eleanor Wonders Why, Leave It to Ari, Snow Friend. I want to know about this one. This is Eleanor Wonders Why. That's the name of the show. Then there's the name of the episode. And we can find out what it's all about. So I can double tap this. Cap S. And now Family. if I move right. Alarm. Button. <clears throat> I can set an alarm. So it can go off and tell me that it's going to come on and when it's going to come on. Leave it to Ari. Snow friend. There's the name of the episode. In 52 minutes. It tells me when in 52 minutes. On UNCKD 113.0. On UNCKD, which is the UNC Kids channel. January 23rd, 2021. Sat. There's the date. 3.30 p.m. There's the time. Eleanor, Ari and Olive take a look at the leaves in the forest. Eleanor, Ari and Olive's new snow friend falls apart after not having enough snow. And there is the episode description. Now. Show overview. Here's the show overview. Watch list. I can add this show to my watch list. So if I double tap this. I can put it in my watch list and know about all the new shows that are coming on. And I'll show you that in a second. Eleanor wonders why. There's the name of the show. Ellipsis. 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 Learn more. Link. Ackle. Link. Here's an ad. Quicken Loans. Link. Mortgage rate. Recalculate. Ackle. Quicken Loans. This is Link. the only annoying Mortgage rates fall. Part. Mortgage rates. Mortgage rates fall. Oh, Ackle. I don't Mortgage think there's rates fall. show Ackle. description. Quicken. Ackle. Link. Learn more. Ellipsis. Ellipsis. <laughs> Ellipsis. Well, that's unfortunate. Eleanor wonders why. Watch list. Show overview. Let me make sure. Cap M. Oh, I double tap list. show overview. Let's see what seasons. this is. Oh, there's seasons. Add. Button. Eleanor wonders why. Back. Back button. So. Eleanor wonders why. I think from here I can also add it to my watch list. Button. But we seasons. have seasons. Empty list. Empty list. And right now that appears to be empty list. Empty. So I'm just gonna back, back, back out of here. I thought it was gonna back. give you a show description. Most of them do. Eleanor wonders why. Let's say watch list. That I want to add this to my watch list. I can double tap watch list. Cap M. Empty. Empty list. Empty list. Seasons. Add button. There's add. Alert. Add to my series. Add to my series. Do you want to follow this show? Add to my series. Cancel. Button. Add button. I'm going to add it. Back. Back button. And now I can go back. Back. I should now be um, in. 113. Family. Alarm. Button. Leave it to Ari. Snow friend. The show. 
So this is the episode that we are about to see at 3.30 p.m. Um, 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 113. Um, I'm going to back out again. 2 p.m. Cyber Chase. Season 12. Now I'm in my channel listing for the UNC Kids channel. Family. Back button. I can back up again. Family. 113. UNC KD. Pinkalish. And I'm back in my channel listings for today. Or at 3 p.m. <laughs> so I want to show you these tabs on the bottom. Tab bar. Tab. 2 of 4. None of them read. Selected. Tab. 1 of 4. Home. Although, if you have descriptions on for, I don't know if it's the text description, I assume it might be the text description or the image description on that was introduced in 14. I don't yeah, know if that's what's making it read or what, but if you, sometimes we'll just let it sit for a second and it'll read. So that one says home. Tab, two of four, check mark. This one says check mark. This is your calendar, I believe. Tab, three of four. That tab, one's, tab, three of four. Nope, that one's not going to read. Tab, four of four, chat. And there's... One that says chat, which is not what it is. So let me show you these really quick. Tab, tab, two of four. This is two of four. Eleanor wonders why. Family. Eleanor wonders why. Family. Leave today. Calendar. Heading. This is my calendar. Button. Home. So which of my series have shows that are playing today? Calendar. Heading. Well, this one today. Does. Eleanor wonders why. Family. Leave it to Ari. Snow friend. 3.30 p.m. UNCKD. 113. There it is. Eleanor wonders why. Family, leave it to Ari. Snow friend, 11.30 p.m. UNCKD, 113. And it tells me it's coming on at 11.30 p.m. and at 3.30 p.m. Tomorrow. Oh, look. DR, T, Lone Star VET, S01, Vertical Line E08, Big Bird, Big Problem, 7 a.m., NGWILD, 150. I actually like this app more and more because tomorrow, here's another show from my watch list, Dr. T, which is an Agio Wild show. I like vet shows. I don't know why, but I do. This is coming on tomorrow. DR, T, Lone Star VET, S01, Vertical Line E06, Pain in the Chinchilla, 9 a.m., NGWILD, 150. There's another DR, one. DR, T, Refinance Calculator, Mortgage Rate, one, stupid one, ad. DR, K's Exotic Animal ER, S08, Vertical Line E12, I Wanna Be Your Baby, 12 p.m., NGWILD, There's another one. DR, K's, Eleanor Wonders Why, Family, What Are You Doing, Thinking About Blinking, 3.30 p.m., UNCKD, 113. You get the picture. So there's another episode of Eleanor Wonders Why. So this is my calendar tab. Let's go to the third tab. Tab bar. Selected. Tab. Tab. Three of four. So here's the third one. If we go in here. DR. K's exotic animal. Wild. One hundred. My series. Heading. These are my series. So. Button. Home. Button. Home. This will take me home. I'll show you that in a second. But. My series. Heading. My series. Wild. 150. On Net Geo Wild, I have two series. DR. K's exotic animal. ER. Airing tomorrow. Vertical line. 12 p.m. A reality series following a veterinarian in Florida that cares for exotic pets. There's one. Selected. Dimmed. Button. I don't know what that means. It's selected and dimmed. I haven't played with this part yet. It might remove my series, which I don't want to do right now. DR. T. Lone Star VET. Airing tomorrow. Vertical line 7 a.m. Dr. Lauren Thielen. DR. T. Is back home in Texas to open her very own exotic animal practice. Located alongside one of the state's largest and busiest animal hospitals. So it tells you a synopsis of each series. Selected. Dimmed. Button. Unked. 113. Here's Eleanor Wonders Why on UNC Kids Channel. Eleanor Wonders Why, airing today, vertical line, 3.30 p.m. Selected. Dimmed. Button. And notice that one doesn't give you a description for something. Tab bar. Tab. One of four. So here's our tabs Button. again, but I want to go back here at the Button. top. Home. 113. UNCKD. If I click that one, it takes me right back into my list. 115. Nick 2. SpongeBob SquarePants. Light Hub. So I'm back in my home tab. That took me all the way back. So now if I want to show you the last tab. Tab bar. Tab. Three of four. Tab. Four of four. Chat. I need to go to the bottom of the screen, find it, and double tap it. Now, here's some interesting things. More. Heading. More. 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 Heading. I'm at the top of the screen. It says more. Heading. More. Heading. Tonight. Button. Tonight. Search. Button. Search. Settings. Heading. App settings. Button. App settings. Channel settings. Button. Channel settings. You can do a lot with your channels. You can move them around. You can. Lineup configuration. Heading. Configure your lineup. Change lineup button. You can change it. That shows you what my current lineup is. Mode heading. This is mode. Create custom lineup button. You can create a custom lineup. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm anxious to try it. Custom lineup allows you to add any channel as you wish, which is suitable for combining multiple lineups. You can add any channel as you wish, which is suitable for combining multiple lineups. So you can make your own. About heading. There's about. Help button. Help. At version 253. At version 253. Tab bar. Tab, one of four. And home. we're back to the tabs. The last thing I want to show Return you series. Button. Tonight. is button. tonight. Tonight. Because I listings. haven't it More. Yet. Back button. So we have TV listings. Tonight. Heading. Movies. Button. USA. 28. Oh, 
what? San Andreas, 114 minutes, thriller, action, adventure, drama, PG-13, 8.30 p.m. So we have San Andreas. Gone in 60 seconds, 118 minutes, thriller, crime, action, we have, rated, 11 p.m. I don't know what this is, Words, so I'm going to go to headings. Rate, language, screen recognition. I think it's showing headings, me different channels. Heading not found. Heading not found. Not. TBS, 38. Ah. 120 minutes. It's just showing me movies that are coming on tonight. So it's like movie night. Something like that, looks Brad, like. Wally, sci-fi, Transformers, the refinance calculate, today's rate. There's another look, look, ad. 140 Paramount. TCM, 60. Out of the past, 97 minutes. Mystery, the night of the hunter, 93 minutes. Thriller, and E, 70. Friday after next, 85 minutes. Comedy. Oh. So it's just showing me different movies. What happens in Vegas, 99 minutes. Comedy, romance, PG-13, 10 p.m. And of course, I could click on any of these to learn more about them. More. Back so button. I'm just going to back out of more. here. Tonight. Button. And more. heading. Return to my. Tab bar. Tab. One of four. Home tab. 115. Nick two. SpongeBob. Button. And. Button. Family. Heading. From here, I'm button. going to change this. Oh, current selected. Family. Current selected. All categories. Default. Back to. Bu all categories. 007. WSPA. College basketball. Baylor at Oklahoma State. Baylor at Oklahoma State. 2 p.m. Runtime. 2 h 0 minutes. I love this app. It's probably going to be my TV listings app from now on because I really like it. It looks like you can do a lot with it. It's free. It's easy. It's accessible. It has four and a half stars on the App Store. And I just got lucky. I get lucky sometimes like this. I just find cool stuff. Chris has some gifts in this field and I have others. And so we make a great team because we can kind of admire what each other does. And we have different things that each of us is good at. So that makes it fun. So we hope you've enjoyed. There's been a little bit of everything in today's episode. And of course, we are thrilled that you joined us today. And we will talk to you again in February. How is that even possible? Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. If you are blind or visually impaired and desire to discover how our comprehensive products and services may support and empower your assistive technology journey, we welcome your visit at www.mysticaccess.com. Have a question or wish to place an order via phone? Call us at 716-543-3323. If you have something to share about this podcast episode, press 4 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at info at mysticaccess.com. Connect with us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mysticaccessempower. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Your friends and colleagues may listen and subscribe at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy our episodes, consider leaving us an iTunes rating and review. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for being a listener. We hope you enjoyed this episode.